Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, it's about a week after Thanksgiving. Yeah, so I got to thinking. I didn't ask the question. Hey, did any of you guys buy the Black Friday deals that were going on? Yeah, I noticed that the Black Friday deals were crazy this year. Man, the prices were unbelievable. So if you missed out, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Maybe you bought one. Put a comment below. Tell me if you bought a bike for uh, yourself on uh, Black Friday. Yeah, the Black Friday things, you know, they were, um, they're, they're not the same. You know, somebody mentioned that it's not the same because it's not just on Friday after Thanksgiving anymore. It's the whole month. It's true. I even mentioned Magicycle had their sales going on. Man, if you missed those Magicycle sales, you missed a lot. The prices were unbelievable. Yeah, I don't know whether companies can recover from that. Um, the retailing side of me, because I used to work in retail many, many years ago. You know, I, we, we used to own a stereo store way back in the late 70s and early 80s, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I worked eight years in retail in, in my, my dad's uh, stereo shop for, for that long. I, but I kept thinking, um, they're dropping the prices of these bikes so low, can they recover from that? I mean, if, if your bikes drop that low, can you go back to normal prices after the the Black Friday sale prices, will anyone want to buy it at that point? Because they know that, oh man, at one time this thing used to be $500 off, now it's back to regular price. Can you recover from that? <laughs> anyway, it's good for the consumer, I guess, but I don't know how good that does for the company down the road. So anyways, put a comment if you bought any kind of bike or, or, or oh, let's just say anything that's e-bike related during the Black Friday month. <laughs> it's just not a single day anymore. Hold on, I gotta take the take, take the sip of water again. Yeah, still coughing. So, uh, <laughs> so now, okay, that was one topic I wanted to, to, to at least mention. But the main purpose of today's topic is this: when people buy a new e-bike, okay, whether they're the first-time buyers or second-time buyers or whatever time buyers you are for an e-bike, I think a lot of people always ask themselves: Am I looking to buy the same kind of bike again? Or, you know, if you're a brand new um, e-biker, you're just starting out, you have to make a decision, right? Do I buy those big four-inch fat tire bikes or do I buy what they call a commuter bike, which has thinner tires? I mean, <laughs> do I buy a bike that looks like a regular bike or do I buy one of those bikes that, that kind of look like, uh, like, a, like a moped, right? Where you're really not, I mean, you've got pedals, but you're really not going to pedal, you're probably gonna throttle that whole time, right? Because the, the saddles are so low, they're not adjustable, that kind of bike. I mean, you got a lot of things to think about when you're buying an e-bike today. It's not, it's not something as simple as just, I'm gonna go out and buy a bike. It's, what kind of bike do you want? You know, how big are the tires do you want? Do you want 20 inch tires? Do you want 26 inch tires? Uh, do you want the 27.5 inch tires that are only like maybe 2.25 inches wide? I mean, there, there's some, some things you gotta think about, right? How do you make that decision? Now, if you're a second time buyer, your first e-bike, you might say, okay, it, it, it was good, but you know, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that. After you've ridden one for a while, you start thinking, did I make the right choice? Should I have done this? Should I have done that? You know, you don't know anything about e-bikes. You buy what you think you know, or what you think you should get. And then after you've ridden it for a season, you're thinking, <clears throat> yeah, that's not, um, wish I had this or wish I had that. Maybe I should have did some more research. I should have bought that. I should have bought this. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not that easy, right? First timers have it real hard. They have nothing to base it on. At least if you're a second time buyer, you're, you're thinking, okay, now I know a little bit more. I'm going to get this kind of bike. I'm not going to go for those other type of bikes, right? So how do you make that decision, right? Now, now for me, I've, I've had a, the luck of being able to try a lot of different bikes. Um, what we do like maybe 28 bikes or something like that now since since i started this whole e-biking journey um turned down a lot but i took at least that much in and so uh where do i sit well i still like my fat tire bikes hold on I'm starting to hear it in my voice right <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> oh man <laughs> what, what do i like okay I still like my fat tire bikes, but I like the nimbleness of the non-fat tire bikes. You know, when I'm on a commuter bike, you know, when we say commuter bike, we're talking usually thinner tires, okay? We're not the big fat tires. When I'm on a commuter bike, I can move around pretty quickly. I, could, I, can, I can make quick turns and whatever on that bike, and 
I'm pretty good at it, right? Not so on the fat tire bike. I have to be a little more, uh, uh, a little more careful. I can't just like make quick turns. It doesn't happen as easily as I can on like a commuter style bike, right? But I still kind of like the fat tire bikes. I like how it takes up the bumps. You know, when I'm going over terrain that's not perfect, which, you know, a lot of times I am on pretty decent terrain because I ride mostly streets. Sometimes I ride the paved bike paths, right? So I don't have really tough terrain to deal with, whereas other guys who go on gravel or they go, you know, totally mountain biking style, they're going over grass and all sorts of stuff. I don't have that kind of terrain that I deal with. So do I really need a four inch fat tire? And the answer is no, you don't really need it, but I like it, all right? I like, I like how how it, uh, it just, it just absorbs a lot of any type of even road bumps and stuff. So, um, but between the two, I, I do appreciate the fact that a lot of the commuter bikes are a little lighter in weight and it's a little bit easier to just kind of move it around. I mean, just even picking up the bike and moving it a little bit, it's, it's easier with the commuter style bikes. Not so with big fat tire bikes that are kind of heavy, right? The frames are heavy. So, and then I look at speed, okay? Some of the bikes I go, well, I wish the bike was a little faster. I wish it could do 28 miles an hour. I wish it could throttle up to 28 miles an hour, even though legally supposed to be class three is supposed to not be able to do that. But I kind of like it. I, I kind of like to be able to, to throttle the 28. I've never really had a desire to go that much faster than 28 because I still feel it's a, it's a little bit fast, you know, at that point. <laughs> Um, I still worry about the legalities of those bikes that can go way, way, you know, fast. Um, and I think maybe some of those bikes might be pushing the limit to where they're going to start regulating us even harder when they see, you know, people doing, you know, that fast on the bike. So I still like to stay within certain limits of the law, but I like the throttle to 28. Okay, I mean, the, the true tra uh, class three, you're supposed to be able to uh, be pedal assisted to 20 and and throttle assisted to 20. But then you could go to 28 by pedal only, but the throttle should not be able to go to 28 on throttle. That's class three. But I like my throttle to go to 28 as well, Okay, because there's times I I feel like I can get cross across an intersection quicker if I had a, f a faster pickup. Um, and then competing with the cars when I'm on the streets that are riding 40 miles an hour. You know, I wanted to do at least 28, and I know, at least for me, I don't have the leg strength because of my knees and everything. I don't have the leg strength to pedal to 28 consistently and, and, and be on that road for that long. But if I can throttle it through to 28, I stand a better chance of surviving, <laughs> okay? So it's... it's uh, I, I like my speed, but I don't like crazy speed. All right. And um, <clears throat> so you have to make certain type of decisions like that. So now as a first time buyer or maybe a second time buyer, um, especially during that Black Friday deals, did you buy a bike? And wh what was the factor that made you buy that one bike that you bought? That's what I want to find out from you guys. OK, now Christmas is coming up, right? It's not too much longer. We'll, we'll hit Christmas. So what are the sales going to happen at that point? Um, I mean, I, I've mentioned in the past, anytime a company has a chance to put on a sale, they're going to try to do that, kind of in, 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 entice you to buy a bike, or buy, entice you to buy some accessories, right? So <laughs> after, after those crazy um, Black Friday deals, how do you go out and buy an e-bike during Christmas time? I mean, unless they bring back that pricing structure again, Right. That's why I always wonder, how do these companies, how do they get through it on a, on, a, on, a, on a company standpoint? How do they get through that after they've given so much of a discount initially? How do they get through it? How, I mean, people are going to expect it all the time is what I'm saying. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I've just noticed that, you know, it wasn't just Magic Cycle. Other companies, too, they were giving some really big discounts. Hold on. This is tough, man. You know, have to try to go through a video and constantly having to suck on this uh, water. But uh, that's the only way that gets me through the, the videos at this point. Um, anyways, put a comment below. Tell me how do you think this happens as far as a company? How does a company recover from, from that type of major sales? Okay. Now, some of the companies had big price decreases because they were dropping a model and they're maybe not bringing that model back. Even if they don't even say it. 
I always have a gut feeling that if it's dropped that low, that model's probably going to go away. That, that's what I think, okay? It's a way to clear a product. But, um, you know, if you get to be known as a company that drops prices like that, um, y y people are going to expect it all the time, is what I'm saying, right? So let me know what you think about that, whether that's good or bad. Now, as a consumer, you may say, that's good because I save a lot of money. Well, that could be bad because that could put a company out of business, right? That's how I see it because of, of my own um, background in, in retail for many years. <laughs> I mean, it's a long time ago, but I still think about stuff like this. So <laughs> put a comment. Let me know. Let me know if you bought something. Let me know what your comments are about um, this whole thing about can a company recover from such heavy discounting pricing of their products. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Just wanted to put that in your brains. <laughs> If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Oh, let me remind you too about this whole thing about subscriptions because somebody brought it to my attention that sometimes people don't understand what a subscribing to a YouTube channel really means. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't cost you anything, all right? What it is is when you hit the subscribe button, it's basically telling uh, YouTube's algorithm that, hey, I kind of like the videos from this, this, um, this channel. And then whenever you turn on YouTube, if the channel has a new video, it'll show up on those lists of uh, you know, recommended videos for you to watch. Then you'll never miss any of the episodes. That's basically what it is. So uh, do me a favor. Just hit the subscribe button. It makes it a lot easier. <laughs> We're trying to hit this 18,000 subscribers by the end of uh, this year. I don't know if it's possible because I know that during the winter months for at least four e-bike channels, there's less people watching sometimes, but uh, if you've been watching for a while and you haven't hit that subscribe button, do me a favor, click that thing. Let's see if we can actually hit 18,000 by the end of December. That's our goal, okay? All right, anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time.